Data management is hard. When you first get started with Unity or even have a fair amount of experience, it's not obvious how to deal with data within your projects. Sure, you can have lists on modded behaviors or clog project folders with lots of prefabs, but there's a better way. Well, actually there's lots of ways, but today we're gonna to start down the road to a simple and elegant solution with the added bonus that it's free. No third party tools needed. And even if you're not too comfortable with C Sharp and are coming from the world of Bolt visual scripting, this can work for you too. So even though what I'll show in this video makes use of C Sharp, it's gonna be useful whether you're coding in Bolt or C Sharp. But before we get started, let's take a quick look at the end goal of the next couple videos. On the screen, I have four functionally identical cubes. Two are controlled with C Sharp based code and two are controlled with Bolt visual scripting. All four cubes have a random wander script that allows the cube to move around on a nav mesh, as well as a stats handler script that takes in the data and helps the object determine its appearance and behavior. Now, regardless of whether you're using C Sharp or Bolt, they both use the same data asset. And that alone means this is a pretty powerful tool or pattern to use. Now, if I go out of play mode and drop in a different data asset and then go back to play mode, the game object will grab the new data and adjust its behavior. And you can see this in the change of its size, its change of its color, and a little hard to tell, but a change of its speed. In this case, the data contains a name Notice that the objects have renamed themselves in the hierarchy while in play mode. It also scales them on the Y axis, adjusts the speed of the nav agent, and also sets its color by assigning a simple material. The data packet that I'm using is an instance of what's called a scriptable object. The game object or agent makes use of the data on the scriptable object to set its appearance and behavior. These packets or scriptable objects are easily duplicated and modified. They are assets in the project folders and are not part of the object or prefab itself which means that if I change the data in the scriptable object, then all objects in the scene using it will have updated data. That's pretty powerful and pretty darn awesome. So let's get on with the business of making a scriptable object. The first thing we have to do is create a template for the instances of the scriptable object. To create the template, I need to do so with a C Sharp script. Now, if you're coming from the Bolt world, this won't be too bad. It should be fairly easy to copy or modify. I'll also add a link in the video description below so you can download my template if you wanna use it as a starting point for your own scriptable object. In the scripts folder, I'm going to right click and add a new C Sharp script. For my case, I'm going to name it agent stats, but you should name it according to the data it will be holding. I'll then double click on the file and let Visual Studio open. Once the file's open, I'm gonna delete the top two lines, which are libraries that I won't be needing. I'm also gonna delete both the start and update functions. This script will not be inheriting from mono behavior, but rather from scriptable object. So I'll need to change that line and I'll do that like so. Since this is just a template, we need a way to create an instance. So I'm going to add a shortcut to the asset menu by adding a single line of code. Above the class declaration in square brackets, I'm going to add the command create asset menu. Using this shortcut will create an instance, but I want to give that instance a default name. And I'll do that with a file name parameter and set it equal to agent stats like so. Now this is just the default name of the soon to be created file. You'll be able to change it later just like you do any other asset in the project. Next I want to assign a label in the asset menu and I'll do that with the menu name parameter and set this equal to agent stats as well. This will be the text that shows up in the asset menu or when you right click in a project folder. If I save the file and go back to Unity, giving Unity time to compile this new script, I can then right click on the project folder and see my new shortcut. If I select it, an instance of the scriptable object will be created in the current folder. If I click on the scriptable object and look in the inspector, there's not a whole lot to see since I haven't defined any fields or variables. So let's do that next. Back in Visual Studio, I'm going to add four variables or four data slots. The first will be a string that will hold the name of the agent. I want to make sure to include the keyword public so the data can be edited in the inspector as well as accessed by other scripts or Bolt flow macros. I'm going to name the string underscore name as this avoids the conflict with the regular name of the object. In C Sharp, you can avoid this by typing the keyword new, like so, but Bolt doesn't seem to play nice with this, so that's why I've added the underscore. Next, I'll add two public float values. The first is the speed, and the second is the height. I'll give the speed a default value of five, and the height a default value of one. The last field is a material, and I'll name it color. The materials I'll be using are just simple shaders with a color assigned to the albedo channel. Now, if I go back into Unity and click on the instance of the scriptable object, I can see in the inspector that I have fields that I can edit. 
I'll want to create a new instance of the scriptable object for each type of agent or character that I want in my game. I can simply duplicate the scriptable object, or I can use a shortcut in the asset menu to create a new instance. In my case, I'll create an instance named Bert with a height of three, a speed of two, and a color of blue. I'll make a second instance named Hank with a height of two, a speed of five, and a color of red. Now for those using C Sharp, you can add a field matching the type of scriptable object, which in my case is the agent stats, to any mono behavior and drag and drop the instance of the scriptable object into the inspector to access the data like you would any other class. If you're using Bolt, you will need to add the type to the units in order to have full access to all the fields or data in the scriptable object. You can do that by going to Tools, Bolt, Unit Options Wizard, then scrolling to the bottom and pressing Next. On the second screen, you can add new types to Bolt. In this case, I'll add the type of Agent Stats and press Generate. Give Bolt a few minutes to do its thing and rebuild its units, and after that, you'll have access to all the fields in the scriptable object within a flow macro. You can either create a variable that references the scriptable object instance, or you can drag and drop the instance into a flow macro and go from there. So there you go, I've created a template for a scriptable object. Since the next steps are heavily dependent on whether you use Bolt or C Sharp, I'm going to stop the video here, and the next couple of videos will create the stats handler scripts. I'll be doing a video for C Sharp, as well as an additional video for Bolt. So if you enjoyed the video, or better yet, found it useful, think about hitting the like or subscribe buttons. If you want to go even further in supporting the channel, check out the links to my Discord or Patreon in the video description below. So until next time, happy game designing.